In a previous video with Manuel Ribeiro, a PhD candidate of the IC school at EPFL, we discussed auditing YouTube and the risk of polarization. The research strongly suggests that there is something arguably bad going on on YouTube. But what can be done? Yeah, so for the YouTube recommender system, like there's a huge debate on like which extent it has influence. Yeah. To like, and there's people that question this that uh, the YouTube system is influential at all, and they think that like it's basically like they just link videos together, like mildly together, and the the social dynamic is what make people become radicals. But even so, would modifying this algorithm be the most pressing thing to do? I'm, I'm not sure, like on the recommender system side, because it seems to me that it's much easier to take like more directed uh, actions, and perhaps this applies to the recommender system, right? So that it seems more reasonable to uh, focus on kind of like what uh, shouldn't be on YouTube, or how can we suppr suppress some sort of speech or some sort of ideology from YouTube than to try to find a super generic solution, right? But manually removing content may also have negative side effects. It's very difficult, right? Because it's also unclear if you ban people, if they will go to other places yeah. and if they will prosper there. For instance, they're moving to other platforms now, right? So you have one called Bit... Uh, what's the name of it? BitChute, right? Which is this like decentralized streaming platform. So what can be done? And that's a bit of the frustrating part about this work is that we kind of show that something is happening, but we don't kind of show why, right? Yeah. And I guess that the, the kind of like my failure to properly address or give solutions is because to kind of give these solutions, you kind of have to, to, to know why, right? Because it, if it's because of the recommender system, then it's very straightforward, right? Then stop trying to stop recommending things. But if it's because of something else, right? It's because of that, uh, uh, I don't know, some social problems and like the world is a mess and uh, there's like a lot of poverty in the rural areas and people feel uh, de de deluded with life and so forth and that's why they seek these comments and they ended up finding it. Like it's another story, you know. Given the current huge uncertainty on the effects of potential interventions, a lot of testing should be done. But should the big social network companies do such testing? I think so. And I think to some extent, I imagine they do, right? Because yeah. I imagine they, 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 I mean, they probably deploy some, some security stuff and some integrity stuff into their algorithms. And uh, I expected them to, to do A-B tests and so forth. But again, it's not so simple. Again, it's very hard because uh, like what kind of data can I get from the users as well, right? So the problem there is that I think this is kind of like in between a bunch of these kind of like complicated issues between privacy and, uh, and, and getting access to user data to doing these interventions and between intervening too much and allowing unacceptable content to be in the platform. So there's all these kind of like uh, different uh, trade-offs that have to be addressed. Yeah. So it, it, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem easy. It seems like a very hard task as well.